Last week, Liz and I backpacked into a remote stretch of beach in the U.S. Virgin Islands to do some spearfishing and camping. While we were there, we found plenty of sign of feral goats, so we made plans to go back and see if we couldn't catch up to one with a stick bow. This episode has a little bit of everything from bow hunting goats to diving for conks and even some homemade tortillas, so stick around. All right, so we just touched down on St. Croix, picked up a rental car, and uh, driving. Follow that guy. He looks like he knows what he's doing. I first met Matt during the orientation for season 8 of the television show Alone where we were both participants. Matt and his wife Carmen run a camp and a primitive skills classes on St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Liz and I already wanted to pay him a visit, but when I heard about the hunting and fishing opportunities, the decision was final. When we arrived, Carmen got us set up in our nice little open air cabin and we started making plans for adventure. Hunting isn't something you typically hear about when it comes to the Caribbean, and you won't find much about it if you look online. Nevertheless, the island has an abundance of feral animals ranging from feral chickens and goats, iguanas, white-tailed deer, red-tailed boas. There's really no telling what you're going to find in this place. And lucky for us, the take of those species is completely unregulated on private lands. And with years of local knowledge, Matt knows exactly where to find them. Man, the goats have done so much damage to this whole area. Like this whole beach, like everywhere along the beach, it was super pristine and tons of different plants and after the goats moved in here they just they just eat every single thing except for two different vines and in some beaches like where we used to do our survival trip you can't even get into the woods from that beach anymore you used to be able to like move up into the woods there was wild lettuce there was the beach bean there was a whole bunch of different stuff and now there's just it's all gone the goats have been slowly moving in as their numbers get more and more they're just really tearing the beaches up a lot so with the plans in place, we get up early, load our gear, and drive a few miles to the trailhead before starting a long hike down to the beach where we'll be hunting. rocks over here is where I expect them to come out like that lower portion yeah where the rocks are darker is where they come then you can see up on the hillside where they've eroded it real bad they'll oh, yeah. also come where the dirt is yeah totally that used to be like fully grassy and all that but they come down there usually when they're spooked they'll also go up there so they'll be so that's here. so they they'll either come around the bottom side of those rocks or off the top but they're coming to that one pinch point the, right it's there. gonna pinch right there and then you'll see where we're, where we're gonna set up at there's a little beach in there I'm set up there and it's sheer cliffs. They come down to that pinch point, come around the beach, and then there's an old road that just got reopened that's starting to use a little bit more right up here. So we'll set up in front of that old road and then maybe we'll get Joe on the road just in case they somehow slink around us. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet.
I was going to have them set up somewhere in here. And then you can see this line in the rocks yeah. and that dip right in there. And they'll come through that dip and around and right on that line of rocks. And you can see their trail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right in there. They'll come down in there and then straight across. And then their trail's right in here. So you can see where they come down onto that pinch point first. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you, you can't get much more scenic than for a hunt. <laughs> nice spot to sit in the morning for sure yeah. yeah usually I usually don't expect them until about 8 if they happen to get around us they'll be up there and if they do get around us we can stalk into the field where they usually where they usually eat that nice so, so. I like this because you got you can see them coming around you got plenty of time to get ready totally and usually hear the hear the young ones like hear the kids kind of calling out they're usually pretty loud on the rocks yeah and if they and if they see us or spook us or whatever we can actually catch up with them because I know the rocks well enough to know where we can hurry and where we have to slow down at. Okay. So. All right. Nice. Good luck. Yeah, man. All right. So it looks like just right up here above the trail, there may be like a little dished out spot. We'll try to get up in there and just set, scrape out a little spot. Hopefully we can still see those cliffs. It's pretty thick in there, but that'll be probably a 10 yard shot if they come down here below us. But that'll give us plenty of cover so they don't spook before they get to us. The browse line where these goats have been, they've pretty much eaten everything from, I don't know, five, six feet down. So looking underneath this stuff, it's a lot less dense than everywhere else. She thought she was going to get a tropical vacation sitting on the beach. We didn't have to wait long before a mature billy materialized out of the rainforest just 10 yards away. Hearing nothing but the crashing surf, he'd slipped in undetected. I wasn't ready for him. He stepped right through my shooting window and stopped behind some brush. I had no shot.
Well, that worked out well. It wasn't the cleanest kill, but it was such a steep angle. Hit him right in the spine. Well, went over and grabbed Matt. You want me to wait here? That was the biggest one in the bunch, I think. This guy? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Congratulations. Well, thanks for the guide service. I think we get him gutted. Yeah, uh, you got a knife or no? Yeah, I got one in my I pack. Got a too. Right, let me call up With a nice billy in the bag, we turn our attention to the clear waters and grass beds along the coast and a very large sea snail that lives there, called a conch. Uh, generally find them in like 20 feet of water or so, 15 feet of water uh, near the grass beds, in the sand near the grass beds. Ooh, there's a turtle out there. We're just gonna snorkel out here, just basically be looking on the bottom. And what are we looking for? Uh, when they're alive, they kind of have like a like a brownish uh, cuticle edge, like the end of your like your uh, fingernail. So they're not like white, like you would see a conch shell that you've already brought out of the water. And they got algae growing all over them, so it's like camouflage to the color of the ground. So it takes a, a little bit of time to get an eye for it. All right. And any any other cues to where they might be? You can also see their trail from where they're walking. They have that shovel that they use to propel themselves forward. And usually, if there's not too many waves, you can see about 50 to 100 yards of their of their trail. And you can just look at their trail, and then they'll be at the end of it. All right, so, tracking conks. There we go, conk tracking. Let's go. The array of marine life here is amazing. There are fish of all shapes, sizes, colors, and names that I can't remember. We spent a lot of time in the water down here, and so in next week's video, we're gonna do a spear fishing catch and cook. So be sure to check back next Thursday at 6 p.m. Central to catch that. There are very few places that I have ever been 
where feeding yourself sustainably from the land and sea would be truly easy. This is one of them. If you're willing to go out and get it year round, there's food available for gathering. Think about that when we were in town. I just thought. I just thought. Wall. Why didn't we think about that when we were out in town too? Did they have the, that tap? Nice little hall right there. Back at Matt's place, we start prepping the conch, which requires you to knock a hole in the spire to break the suction and be able to pull out the meat. Once you get them out, they look more like a giant loogie than something you'd want to eat. But after a little trimming, you're left with a pure white hunk of meat. The tender portions of which has a surprisingly pleasant flavor. Try a piece. Oh, seriously, it's kinda good, like, really good. It's kind of like scallop, like cooked scallop. It's actually it's, really good. It's tender, um, it's sweet, and that's just like straight raw conch. So yeah, everything that's from here back, we're just gonna slice, and then everything from here forward, we're gonna slice it into, into slices, and then we're gonna pound it with the pounder here to tenderize it, because this, this back here is very, very tough. All right, so we've got the tender stuff here separated from this really dense, and you can feel, like this is, this part of the conch is super hard, and this part, like it's nice and soft. Like I could take a, a bite of this. This one, you'd have to chew on that for a little bit. So we're gonna take this one and slice it. Hey Joe, can you bring down a, a couple of cutting boards right quick? Yeah, or we can bring it up there. We'd already butchered the goat earlier in the day, and even though he was an old billy, the meat had no goaty smell or flavor whatsoever. Mm, that's cool. Score. There it is. Since the hurricane, it hasn't What's that come called? Back. It's the plant. What, what's it called? It's called Raquel. With the goat meat all taken care of, we head out to forage some additional ingredients for the meal to come. Cilantro. So it, this plant has the same chemical that cilantro has that makes it smell like that. And it retains that flavor through cooking. You got a good eye for it. Looks just like grass, but it has the two of them. I'm gonna make some fresh tortillas. Got some masa harina cornmeal. Got to flop the camera over. Do you want to be the ball maker? Where'd you go? All right, you ready? All right. I'm gonna take a, make a ball of hay. Hold on. 
Well, what's the good of fighting? I got my question. What is that constitution? Yeah, but, but, uh, nice. is that affecting you on a day to day basis? No, okay. You know, and when you look at, when you look at, it's because the states gave you guys the money. Okay, just a minute. Ready? Yeah, go for it. That is a lot of meat. That is a ton of meat. It's funny how, you know, when we first cut it up, I was like, oh, it's not as much as I thought it would be, but now it's like, oh, it's plenty of meat. You want to get a tongs for those guys or something to put those guys on? Sure. I'm just throwing out a guess that he's kind of... probably done. This is pretty close. Because you don't need to, uh... That is gonna be that awesome. That looks pretty damn good right there. <laughs> I just wanna eat it right now. That's... Mm. Oh my god. That is really good. Lots of everything, really. Lots of onions, garlic. Yo. It's the white foot. Boots. All right, everybody. Dinner's ready. Let's eat. There's some fresh tacos right here. Let's eat. Even when I'm trying to dig around the root, I'm trying to move the tree. I'm like, yeah. dude. That's how long you're going to be. He's like, you serious? Nah, man, I'm going to get it. Because I was. Yeah, I thought she. Yeah, it's a lot of tortilla. Yeah, and it's fresh. Like, it looks like bread. Super good. Is that acceptable? It's just freaking delicious. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this one. Next week, we're going to be back with another Catch and Cook video from the islands. So check back next Thursday, 6 p.m. Central. We'll see you then. Yeah, scorpion fish. Yeah, we got enough ties. We'll just... We need to put more on there. We got... <laughs>